Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my personal experience with some of the Form 1 ESCs that I have tested, real world tested and also have done bench testing on. However, some I have not done the bench testing on and some that I have done actually both bench testing as well as real world testing and some just bench testing. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you my experience so far of each and every single one of them and which one if I had the choice to pick right now, which ESC I would, 4 in 1 ESC I would actually go and grab uh, without having anything to worry about. So some of the ESCs that are on the list right now are going to be the DYS F30 Amp 4 in 1 ESC, the Airbot Typhoon 35 Amp, which is also the IPCA 35 Amp 4 in 1 ESC, uh, the Race of Star Tattoo 4 in 1 ESC, which is a 35 amp one, the Kikadas uh, 35 amp ESCs, and I know some of you might not like how I say the Kikadas, but that's how I'm sticking to right now. So it's the 35 amp 4 in 1 ESCs, as well as the Fly Color Tower, which has the uh, Fly Color 40 amp Raptor S. It's a very nice one, that one. And that new uh, cheap $57 stack that comes with an ESC from Dal RC, as well as the Hobbywing 40 amp uh, 4 in 1 ESC. So, as you can tell, these two I still have not built, but I have done the bench testing on. So, let's go ahead and start with the worst ESCs that I have used. Some of you might agree, some of you might disagree, and I would truly love to hear your opinions down in the comment section, and I'm sure others will also, because the aim of this video is to actually help people out in the community. So I'm sharing my experience and I really wish you guys would share yours also. This is the whole point of this video. So let's start with the uh, worst ESCs. Now the first two ESCs by far I would totally avoid no matter what are the Typhoon 35 amp e 4-in-1 ESC from Airbot and as well as the IPCA 35 amp 4-in-1 ESC, the D-Shot 600, I would totally avoid those. In my opinion, I've had three. Terrible noise, terrible, absolutely terrible noise. Um, it was just, it was very bad. And that's why we rebuilt the quad the other day. And I have another one to rebuild because it has the IPK 35 amp 4 one ESC. So those I would totally stay away from. The price does not justify jack shit about them. And I'm sorry for my language. Now, let's jump to another ESC that I have actually gotten placed a couple times and just didn't want to work with me, which is the DYS F30 amp ESC. Uh, this is the 4 one ESC that comes with the uh, DYS F4 Omnibus. And that one's basically down the trash because um it was it was very terrible. Um I've built it and I've done everything, plug it in, two ESCs won't initialize, two ESCs are not even recognized, and um yeah, um that's very bad. And then I got a replacement. Same exact thing. I think it was motors two and three, and a lot of people reporting this issue because I've also gotten a lot of emails about this. Now those two ESCs, for me, from my experience, I would totally avoid. This is my take, and I would love to hear your take. Now let's jump to other ESCs. Let's do the ones that I've done bench testing on, but no real world testing on. And this is where I ask for your feedback. Now we have the Dal RC combo that came with the flight controller, which was only $40, $57. So it came with a VTX flight controller, as you can see here, and it's 20 amp 4 in 1 ESCs. This thing was $57, and from bench testing this, this did absolutely beautiful. It even did better than DYS, which was like $100 or more for that combo. So in bench testing, usually bench testing does not fail me, and it's showing me that this is a good ESC. But then I ask you guys for your opinions, because I'll be building this very soon, and we're gonna see how this is gonna stack up. So this is so far seems like a good one, but I can't promise anything because I've not done the real world testing here. So let's put this guy to the side. The next one on the list is the Hobbywing 40 amp 4 in 1 ESC. Testing was absolutely beautiful. I have not done any real world testing. However, it looks like it's an OEM from the Fly Color Raptor S, uh, the new one, the 40 amp one. And that one tested beautiful and I've done the real world testing and it's flying beautiful. So I really do have high expectation for this board. And I would also really love to hear you guys' feedback on this board because I have not built it just yet, as you can tell. All right, so let's jump to the ones that I've done basically uh, both real world and bench testing except one. So we have, let's 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 start with the Ra Fly Color Raptor. Now this is the Fly Color Raptor in here. It's a 40 amp 4 in 1 ESC. It comes a whole tower with the, uh, it's an F3 flight controller. Um, it just comes a whole, it's, it's pretty expensive actually. It's around $80. But when I tested these ESCs, they tested absolutely beautiful. And they performed absolutely beautiful. And I'm running 2506 uh, motors, I think here, or seven. 
Yeah, I'm running 2506 motors here, 2400, 2450 KV. Uh, this was way overkill and it was just useless. Racer Star 2205 motor, which costs like $7, would have been a lot better. And um, I, I would totally avoid this if you're, if you're running 4S. This is just terrible. Um, it was just, it was just bad. Um, I couldn't enjoy this. I couldn't even fly this. So uh, this is not for me. But however, the ESCs just performed no issues but it's still kind of early and the bench testing was good so this one is okay so far and this is where i would like to go back for your experience down in the comment section let everyone know but so far it's good um i really can't say much i haven't put a lot of time into this because i'm going to re be replacing the motors actually because it's useless like this so let's put this guy to the side the maiden will come very soon and let's go ahead to these two here because these two are the two 4 one ESCs I would recommend hands down. Now, why would I recommend them? One, they're pretty good price. They're very good price for 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 4, four one ESCs that have um, that that that, dish, that are DSHOT 600. Now, this one here is the Kikada 35 amp 4 one ESC, and this one here is the Racer Star 35 amp tattoo 4 one ESC. This is the DSHOT 1200 ESC. So this one is a little bit more advanced. So let's talk about each of them. Um, now let's start with the Kikadas here. Now these have been in the market for a very long time. A lot of people use them and a lot of people say they're good and they are good. They do have a little bit of noise and I did have to add low ESR capacitor, but I didn't need a voltage regulator. That cleaned everything out for me. So the Kikadas in that perspective are very good. They're pretty good priced also. Let me actually check the price here. All right, so the, the Kikadas here are $48 right now, I, on Banggood at least. I don't know, you can probably find $50 in other places, but they're still around $50, which is basically what, what the price was a while ago also, if I remember correctly. So these were very good ESCs. This ESC, this 4-1 ESC has been serving me for over five months, a, a lot, possibly a lot more, I just don't remember how long. Um, you, you, from the day I built this, this is my most reliable backup quad. Well, actually one of my most reliable backup quads. It flies beautiful, characteristics fine, never have any issues, turn it on, fly, enjoy. Break the port, which is just the VTX, that's a very bad habit of mine. I always break these. But um, other than that, I've never had an issue, still flying, still functioning, absolutely beautiful, and um, I just trust it. It's one of those quads you can just absolutely trust. You just stick that battery in, it's not going to do anything weird or anything stupid on you. So the Kakadas are one of my go-to ESCs here. Now it is rated a 3 to a 4S LiPo, and it's a BL Heli S, which is DSHOT 600. So that's something to take note of here. Now, let's move to my other favorite. Now, why would this one be my favorite? Well, because we all know the Maytech issue, the Maytech F405 all-in-one flight controller. There's a new one out now, but I'm talking about the old one with the sensitive gyro. So there was a little problem when you have very noisy ESCs, it would affect it and make it twitch. Now, uh, to solve that issue was to add capacitors until you, you that issue was gone. So what I have done here, okay, listen to this. This is a Racer Star 4 one ESC with the Maytech board and with no low ESR capacitors, as well as no nothing, no voltage regulators and no low ESR capacitors. And I was expecting to actually hit or possibly um, hit have that twitching issue with the Maytech and the Racer Star with no low ESR capacitor because Maytech really recommends you add a low ESR capacitor for the gyro. Not for the noise in the video, for the gyro, but the noise that's hitting the gyro or it was a regulator. One of the regulators I think was turning off for a bit because of the voltage spikes or something. And I think that's what was causing the issues if I remember correctly. But anyways, the point is I didn't use a low ESR capacitor even though Maytech recommends it with their these boards. And um, I used the Race Star 4-in-1 ta ESC, the Tattoo ESC here. And I, like I said, I left it with no low ESR capacitor to see how well it's gonna perform. And I think this is one of the best test, real world testing you could do for a, a 4 one ESC, other than, you know, longevity here and durability. But, um, you know, I, I didn't have any twitches, which absolutely surprised me. The video feed was clean and the bench testing on this guy was actually very good. Very, very good. However, they ha it has, I believe, two voltage regulators on board. It has a five volt and a 12 volt regulator. They do have a bit of noise but I'm not powering, I'm not using those regulators. But those regulators, the amount of noise is so minimal that I think just one, like 330 microfarad low ESR capacitor or 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor would clean that up, which is absolutely beautiful. 
Now, um, overall, till this day, I still believe that this is one of the best 4-1 ESCs. I truly, truly, truly love this. Um, and I am, I'm sticking to it right now. And we're going to see how well it's going to do. And um, yeah, hopefully it's going to do very good. I mean, um, so far it's been doing well. I'll keep you guys completely updated on all of these 4-1 ESCs. Soon we'll be building more. But um, right now, these two have come down to be my favorite just because of the overall use and overall experience so far so i'm going to go ahead and check this price so the kakadas and the racer star tattoos are around the same area 50 dollars. so just keep in mind 50 bucks for four and one esc is, is basically that's how it is everywhere right now um these two really stand out for me and uh these two have just been very good and um i'm very pleased with both of them so if you're a hater to racer star i don't know why you would be but if you are don't get it get the sunrise kakata because sometimes even race star goes the same manufacturer as the sunrise kakata's here and um yeah gets the same components so it's just a branding i would rather go for whatever's cheaper however here you have d shot 1200 and it's working beautiful so um, to be honest, the obvious choice would be to jump on the racer star, at least for me. But, you know, it's a personal preference and it's whatever is available around you. And um, these ESCs are readily available. Sometimes they caught as you can find them out of stock. But the, the racer star 35M tattoos um, are usually available almost everywhere. And they have two regulators. They have a 5 volt and a 12 volt regulator. So what else do you want? Um, and I think that's it, guys. So, um I really hope this helped someone out there. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you next time. See you guys. Take care.